Yeah, we we mentioned your your upcoming uh, book on you know on, on this side of the Atlantic. It's it's out in uh, the end of March, April it, for people who want to pre-order it from um, from your own site, which we'll put in the show notes and from the the, the normal um, retailers online or, or bookshops. But it, it sets out to create you know a high performance mindset fueled by the language of excellence. Um, can you explain a little more about the, 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 the drivers to write it and, and you know, what the core of topics are? Because obviously uh, a lot of people haven't seen it. We were lucky uh, on the podcast to get a, an advanced copy of it. But could you just give people a bit of context um, of what's involved in the book and, and what motivates you to write it? Uh, sure. And, and one of the interesting motivators was, was James Kerr. I, I had read Legacy. I had been consulting with organizations. I started applying the 15 principles uh, and I, I had created a, a talk and, and course actually out there called uh, Warriors Not Winners. And it was the idea that, and, and I've since dropped that moniker just because I, I want to respect you know, our, our uh, armed forces and, and other, other warriors within our society. Um, so, and I don't want to turn youth sports into sort of that, you know, that, that yeah. battleish mentality. But the idea was that we can create these Spartan mindsets, these warrior mindsets in people. Or we can treat, create a winner's mindset. And so I would juxtapose what it looked like to be that spoiled um, winner mentality that we sometimes see, the me, everything's about me sort of mentality. And I would juxtapose them. And I would use a lot of the Spartan principle or the, the, the all black principles from James Kerr's book. <laughs> and as I continued to, to grow and evolve and develop, um, I started creating uh, talks and, and products about the warrior brain. There are certain words that we can say that can trigger processes in the brain. And, and, and a lot of it was... I was taking liberty with neuro neuroscience, but I was saying that, you know, this is the vision center of the brain. This is the, the, you know, so we want to speak to people about them and their views and their goals. And this is the amygdala. And so we want to tell people we love them and not generate fear. And, and so my son challenged me, he said, you know, you talk a lot about words and you were always that word coach. I always had pithy sayings. I felt like if I could, if I could teach my players in pithy sayings, then we could communicate with a lot less, say a lot more with a lot less. So they learned fine feet, you know, f chalk your boots, which meant get wide all the way to the line, find feet, which meant get open so your teammate can see both of your feet or show both feet. And, and so hands on, you know, no, things we started using just one and two word phrases within all of my players and they knew exactly what I was talking about. So we could communicate a lot and very little. My son said, well, you know, he challenged me, he said, said, well, are there words that, that you think are very important when it comes to performance that you could write a book about? You should write a book about this dad. So I did, mm -hmm. that was the challenge. And I, we set out to write it in a month and I did, I found an old, uh, social media post where I said, I just finished writing 45,000 words and you know, whatever it was 30 some days and I'm going to go take a break. So I did it in a month, but the whole point of the book was to, to find those words that I'd seen in my career and, and in other situations where it either empowered somebody and helped, uh, with their peak performance. So those, those inhibiting words, and, or, or there were those peril words. So those words that if we use them, they sort of just chop our peak performance off right at the knees. You know, they're choke words. They're words that cause us to trip up as athletes. And then I found also some transformational words that I added in at the end, words like love. Love is just a transformational word as a person. And when you start using the word love as a coach, and, and don't, I mean, John Wooden, one of the greatest, used the word, so it's not a foreign word. It, it transforms the relationships with the people around you. So the book is laid out word by word. Each chapter is a word. And each each chapter then goes into a story where that word is used or similar phrase or wording is used, how effective it was, and then how the brain reacts to those words, depending on how we've set it up in the context. And then some hints and tips of, hey, here's how you can use that word in your profession, in your own personal profession or in your, your leadership role. And or if it's a peril word, here's ways to use something different. And I, I don't like saying don't do this as much as I like saying instead do this. And that's a social emotional thing that we do with our kids. We, we don't tell them not to do something. We tell them to do something differently. Mm -hmm. 